Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to knit basket weave stitch. Now basket weave stitch is an absolute classic. It has been done since the dawn of time and it's a really great stitch to have in your repertoire, especially when you are a beginner and you're wanting to do something a little bit more complex, but you're not ready to dive into some of the really complex stitch patterns with quite long um, pattern repeats. This is a lovely stitch to do for small projects like washcloths. You can incorporate a small garter stitch border around it, knit it up in cotton. Fabulous for those small Christmas gifts that you're wanting to make. And also you can scale it up and it does make for an amazing baby blanket. It gives texture without looking too fussy and it's just an absolute classic. It does have a definite right and wrong side. So what we are looking at here is the right side. That's the classic basket weave that we are aiming for. And then if we flip it over, we can see that it does have a wrong side. That wrong side isn't ugly. It just doesn't look anything like the front side. So without further ado, grab some yarn, grab some needles and let's get knitting. The pattern multiple for basket weave stitch is eight plus five. So you need to cast on a number of stitches that is a multiple of eight until your project is as wide as you want it to be. And then you need to add five extra stitches. I'm just going to make a small sample today. So I'm going to cast on 37 stitches. So if you want to go away and cast on as many stitches as you want, I'll meet you back at the end of the cast on edge. You can use whichever cast on method that you like, but I like to use the long tail cast on method. Basket weave stitch is an eight row repeat. So you repeat the same eight rows over and over until your project is as big as you want it to be. I will walk you through each of those eight rows. And once you've learned those eight rows, you just need to repeat them over and over until you are satisfied with the size of your project. So row one is nice and easy. You just want to turn your work after your cast on and just go ahead and knit every single stitch. We are knitting all the way across. No pearls, no slip stitches, we are just knitting all the way across. Row two is the row where you start building your basket weave pattern and you want to work the same simple pattern repeat all the way across your row. And that pattern repeat is knit five, pearl three, Knit five and purl three. And you want to do that all the way across the row. Knit five, purl three, knit five, purl three. And because we added that extra five stitches on at the end, you should end on a knit five. That makes your work symmetrical at either end. Row three is very similar but it is the opposite of row two. So instead of starting with a knit five, we are going to start with a purl five. And then once you've purled five, instead of purling three, we are going to knit three. So we're working the opposite to what we worked in the first row. So it's purl five, knit three, all the way to the end, ending on a purl five. Row four is the same as row two. So we're going to work knit five, purl three, all the way across to the end, ending on a knit five. So it's exactly the same as we did for row two. Row five is another nice and easy one. You want to knit all your stitches just like we did for row one. What we have done with rows one to five is we have built this first section of our basket weave. Now, in order to get the woven effect, we need to switch up how we work our stitches because if we carried on working in the way we have, we would end up with no basket weave. So in order to get the woven appearance, rows six, seven and eight are slightly different from the rows we've worked so far. So to start, you want to knit the first stitch for row six then purl three. Then you want to knit five, and you want to work purl three, knit five, until you have four stitches left. The last four stitches should be purl three,
and knit one. Row seven is again really similar, but you want to purl the first stitch and then knit three. Then after you've knitted three, you want to purl five. And you want to work knit three, purl five, until you have four stitches left on your row. The last four stitches should be knit three and purl the last one. Row eight is the same as row six, so you want to knit the first stitch, purl three, and then knit five. And you want to work purl three, knit five until you have four stitches left. And just as with row six, your last four stitches are purl three and knit one. And once we turn the right side of our work to face us, you can see quite clearly the basket weave stitch pattern is already really nice and visible. Now you would go back to row one and repeat for as many times as you need to repeat those eight rows so that your project is the size that you need it to be. I will give you one really quick recap of the eight rows that we have worked so far. Row one, you want to knit all your stitches. Row two, you want to knit five, purl three, all the way across until five stitches remain and you want to knit those last five stitches. So it's knit five, purl three, all the way across until you have five stitches left and those last five stitches you are going to knit. For row three, you are going to purl five, knit three, all the way across until you have five stitches left and you are going to purl those last five stitches. So it is purl five, knit three, all the way across until you have five stitches left and those last five stitches you are going to purl. Row four is the same as row two, so that's knit five, purl three, all the way across until you have five stitches left and you're gonna knit those last five stitches. So just to repeat, that's knit five, purl three until you've got five stitches left and you were going to knit those last five stitches. Row five is really nice and easy. You want to knit every single stitch all the way across. Row six is where we tweak the stitch repeat slightly so that we get that nice basket weave pattern. So you want to knit the first stitch, purl three, and then knit five. And you want to work purl three, knit five until you have four stitches left. And we're going to finish row six with purl three, knit one. Row seven is a mirror image of row six, so you want to purl the first stitch, and then you want to work knit three, purl five, all the way until you have four stitches left. So that's knit three, purl five. The last four stitches of row seven are knit three and purl the last stitch. So knit three, purl one. Row eight, the last row of the repeat is the same as row six. So you want to knit the first stitch and then work purl three, knit five until you have four stitches left. And then for those last four stitches, you are going to purl three and knit one. So you can see after finishing two repeats, our basket weave pattern is really quite nice and clear now. A couple of tips for when you finish off your work. So you always want to finish off after you've worked a full repeat. What I would then advise you do so that you get a matching top and bottom is that you go ahead and knit one more row one and then you cast off knitwise on a row two. That just means that you will get the same row of garter bumps top and bottom along with the gap between your purl bumps on your final part of your basket weave pattern. That's optional. 
if you're not that worried about everything looking identical then you don't have to do that but if you're wanting your piece to look nice and symmetrical top and bottom as well as at the sides then i would advise that you knit your row one and then cast off on a row two and by doing that what you get is the top and bottom edge look the same so if you look at this piece here this is my cast off so i have gone away this is a row eight where you can see the pearl bumps here, but you can see in between row eight and the cast off, I have knit one more row and then turned and cast off my work instead of doing row two. As ever, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, then please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you again for another tutorial soon. Bye.